I'm Dr. Brett DePoyster with The Aquarian Vet, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about buoyancy disorders in goldfish. One of the most common conditions that clients contact us about are buoyancy disorders in goldfish. These goldfish can present in a variety of ways, including floating at the surface of the water, which is known as being positively buoyant, or they could be lying on their sides at the bottom of the aquarium or pond, which is referred to as negative buoyancy. It's important to point out that buoyancy problems in goldfish are a clinical sign, meaning this is something that we can see is wrong with the fish. However, there are many different underlying causes that can result in those buoyancy issues. This is important to consider when we're choosing the appropriate treatment for the goldfish. The main reason goldfish have buoyancy disorders results from dysfunction of the swim or gas bladder, which is an organ that's responsible for regulating buoyancy within the column. Think of the swim bladder as a balloon. It's thin-walled, saccular, and gas-filled that expands when it's filled with gas and deflates when gas is released. The swim bladder expands and contracts, and that quantity of gas determines the level of buoyancy experienced by the goldfish within the water column. That's not all. The swim bladder also has functions including roles in respiration and breathing, uh, sound production, and detecting pressure changes. Looking at the swim bladder anatomy in a little bit more detail, goldfish have what's referred to as a physostomous swim bladder, meaning it has a duct that connects to the esophagus, and this is called the pneumatic duct. And the duct allows voluntary inflation of the swim bladder through gulping of air at the water surface, Alternatively, we can deflate the swim bladder, and that is achieved through emptying gas into the esophagus, which is then emitted as bubbles from the fish, which is essentially burping. Now, not all buoyancy disorders are due to problems with the gas bladder. We can also see buoyancy disorders if air or gas is building up in the digestive tract or the intestine, and this can occur if the goldfish is swallowing too much air while eating. We could have bacterial infections in the intestine and even intestinal blockages, and these are a few of the other common causes of buoyancy disorders. So now that we're experts in buoyancy and swim bladder anatomy, Let's investigate some of the common causes or risk factors that is associated with buoyancy disorders in goldfish. Generally fancy goldfish varieties like fantails, lionheads, ryukins, ranchus, moors, and arandas have short and wide body shape. This naturally predisposes them to buoyancy disorders, and this is further complicated due to often an abnormal development of the gas bladder itself, and it can either be too large, resulting in being positively buoyant, or too small, resulting in being negatively buoyant. Poor water quality and fluctuating temperatures can lead to gas bladder buoyancy problems. Also, it can cause immunosuppression and many other significant impacts on the overall health of your goldfish. And as I'll almost always stress in all of our lessons, it's incredibly important to regularly test your water quality parameters. In addition, feeding floating foods can lead to a floaty fish. If you're feeding pellets or flakes that float at the surface, the goldfish can gulp excess air during the feeding process, which can then either enter the gas bladder or the intestines, resulting in a positively buoyant fish. Another cause can be blockage of the pneumatic duct. Remember, that's that connection between the gas bladder and the esophagus. This can lead to a reduced ability to take in or release air, resulting in buoyancy disorders. Another cause can be twisting or torsion of the gas bladder, preventing it from functioning, resulting in both positively and negatively buoyant fish. Another cause could be bacterial or viral infections, and that can result in thickening of the gas bladder wall, reducing its elasticity, uh, preventing either expansion or uh, deflation of the swim bladder. Another cause can be tumors or masses, which interfere with the normal function of that gas bladder, resulting in buoyancy disorders. So how do we manage these issues? Ultimately, the management depends on the cause of the buoyancy issues. For example, if the underlying problem is a bacterial infection, then antibiotics would be indicated in the management. However, the vast majority of cases are not due to bacterial uh, infections, and therefore antibiotics often are not required. 
There are several things that we can do to prevent or reduce the risk to your goldfish and prevent buoyancy disorders from developing in the first place. First, feed our goldfish sinking pellets and not floating pellets or flakes. This will reduce the amount of air that they swallow while they are eating. When transitioning between foods, we do want to do it slowly to allow intestinal microbes adapt to that new food. The next preventative measure is maintenance of optimal water quality and regular testing of your water parameters. We want to make sure that we have maintenance of a healthy biological filter in order to ensure that we have optimal water quality. The next thing that's incredibly important is optimal temperature requirements for the species that you're keeping. Most goldfish that are kept thrive in that range of 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. If we are dealing with a goldfish that has a buoyancy disorder, treatment depends on that underlying cause. A few things can help with the fish recover. Well, sometimes buoyancy disorders will require veterinary care or the buoyancy issue might actually be a permanent condition. First, let's mention peas. Peas are probably the most common treatment that you'll read on the internet to treat buoyancy disorders. Do they really work? Well, the short answer is probably not, but it won't hurt to try. The premise is that the peas will pass through the digestive system and they may physically deflate the swim bladder on their way through if the gas bladder is descended. Or if the buoyancy is due to intestinal problems, the peas are just a good supplemental feed for these omnivorous fish. In addition, peas tend to sink in the water column, reducing the amount of air that's swallowed while feeding. In cases that don't respond to these preventative measures that we discussed, a trip to the veterinarian might be required. Further diagnostics such as x-rays will help diagnosing that underlying cause of the buoyancy disorder and determine the appropriate treatment plan. In some cases, excessive gas that's accumulated in the swim bladder can be removed or aspirated by the veterinarian while that goldfish is under a general anesthetic. If an infection is suspected upon assessment, antibiotics might be indicated. Also, some fish that are positively buoyant can have portions of their skin exposed to the air and then result in secondary uh, bacterial infections. And these might also require antibiotics and wound management. Many goldfish with buoyancy disorders tend to remain healthy, eat well, and live relatively good quality of lives. There's some cases where veterinarians and hobbyists have designed harnesses to help the goldfish stay in neutral buoyancy. These can be beneficial, but if they're worn all the time, can lead to rubbing of the skin and result in ulceration, and really should only be used temporarily. There are also some veterinarians that have tried surgical correction with mixed success, but something that you could discuss with your veterinarian. So that's it for this lesson. I hope that you have a better understanding of goldfish buoyancy disorders, and I'll see you in future lessons.